Hi everybody, my name is Aaron. I'm Naomi. This is Heard It Now, and today we got Injury Reserve with their debut album, even though they have a few mixtapes, self-titled Injury Reserve. We're pretty big Injury Reserve fans. I mean, we've been listening for a few years now. We're going to go ahead and push play on the first track, Karuna and Lime. Or possibly Corona. Yeah, humble is a mumble in the jungle, you dig. Can't never knock the hustle, get that shit how you live. Yeah. I like that. Just don't speak. <laughs> like you're speaking in mime. I like that line. This is exactly what I wanted. Already, starting off fantastic on the production side. Dude, the dude is a genius. They got a genius producer. He's fantastic. One of the best out there. Makes very colorful, eccentric beats. And this is no different. It sounds like some kind of chanting or something like that, but it has these weird little clinks in the back for the rhythm. It's crazy. Grogs, I mean, he's just killing it on the floor. Sounded like it's very good. They say they want their real talk. But why these preachy ass niggas out here sounding like a TED talk? Yeah, bro. Sounding like a TED talk. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you in my next live. <laughs> 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 I've really enjoyed that song. It was like all over the place in like the right ways. I don't even know how to like to describe it. Like it was just fun. I I really enjoyed it. Like I started off saying, dude, this is exactly what I expected or wanted, all of it. I mean the beats are eccentric. These guys are have great chemistry together. Their flows just bounce off each other in a very fun way. You can tell the different perspectives they have, clearly. The fact that they're starting off with such great sense of humor is already giving me good feelings going forward because that's one of the elements where they succeed that others tend to ignore. They're kind of like satirical, you know? They're not straightforward jokey, like making joke songs. They're just kind of like taking jabs at society. So the next track is Jailbreaker and we actually did a reaction to the music video of that. The link will be down in the description. So we're just gonna skip forward to Get the Fuck Up. Oh, and it's featuring JPEG Mafia. Get the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Definitely incorporating his Peggy's sound into this. It's just starting off crazy already. JPEG's influence already felt. I didn't say Simon Says, so back the fuck up. I never even heard this guy before. Cakes the Killer? I never even heard him before, dude. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. That was awesome. His flow was aggressive. Match that weird, like, vocals. This is like the second track we've heard with these vocal backgrounds. They're creating beats with... With voices. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's not like the first time we've ever heard of it. How well this is being executed is what's impressive so far. Yeah. It's so much fun, man. It's got me hyped. Nigga, you like Stacey Dash on BT, my nigga. If you pray, can you pray for these niggas? And if you don't, can you pull it out for these niggas? Yo, I'm a cable cutter, so I don't even know who Stacey Dash is, but uh, clearly he doesn't like her. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! Such beautiful violins. <laughs> That's what I take away from this oh, track. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was so much fun. That got me so hyped. It was so well executed. The beat was crazy, just like the first track. Oh man. No complaints so far. Yeah, I really enjoyed that song. It was so out there. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. And I really enjoyed like Peggy's part, like the different get the fuck ups and how they were manipulating his voice there. That was pretty cool too. So far these tracks are feeling really anxious. I don't know if, if that's like the appropriate term, but they just feel like so claustrophobic and contained, like something's trying to escape, like they're <laughs> trying to escape something, you know? It's so abrasive, but it's awesome. The next track is QWERTY Interlude. Fourth grade frost, why bear share bandit? Lime, 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 fifth grade, so, so, so. It was actually an interlude that I enjoyed. I like the LimeWire <laughs> reference in there. LimeWire, Pirate Bay. I mean, he went through the whole list of freaking person to person sharing right there. I mean, I didn't say I partook in any of that. <laughs> but I've heard that, you know, it kind of gave access to a lot of people who didn't have a lot of money the ability to actually listen to their favorite artists and ability to learn about new artists and go and find out about a lot of these indie artists that you would have to pay 20 bucks a CD or whatever. And that does support them. But at the same time, I mean, you're talking about probably a generation of fans created just because of person-to-person -person sharing. Up next, 
Jailbreak the Tesla. It's actually one of the singles that got released uh, prior to the album coming out, but we never covered it, so we haven't heard it. I can't wait till I get it. It's not in there. Tesla, I take it to West Coast because I just turn the touch screen to IRS for fun. Then make the autopilot do it, do I go dumb. Entry Reserve has previously mentioned West Coast Customs in their tracks before. Yeah. They clearly were a big Pimp My Ride fans. <laughs> hey, I was a big Pimp My Ride <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard Richie with a T flow quite like this. Quite like this. This is definitely a step up in terms of speed. This is pretty crazy. And the beat is pretty interesting with like these plops. Yo engine go boom. And my engine go Elon on them shrooms and Grimes voice gonna be the GPS turn left. <laughs> They're not together anymore, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, imagine if he put Grimes' voice as a GPS though. Amine, he's coming in here with a little bit more of a trap flow, but it's killing it. It's killing on this beat because it's kind of like not really a trap beat, but it's, it's working. I really enjoyed his features. This shit ain't too shabby, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Zero to that 60, huh? Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. I want to get a Tesla and jailbreak it. I hope that there's people in Teslas that know about this song riding around in their Teslas. That track is great. And you know what I really appreciate about Injury Reserve, especially on this particular album so far, is their references and just how current they are. It says, Raised by the Internet. He says that... Uh, he said that in one of his earlier mixtapes, the subject matters that he talks about is so embedded in the internet. Like, it literally feels like he's pulling, like, memes and shit out and, like, just, like, message board conversations. It just feels so fresh. It feels so relevant. It feels so today, 2019. There's, like, a lot of, like, older references from when I was a kid growing up, too. And I actually enjoy that a lot about their style and these songs so far. Up next, Gravy and Biscuits. <laughs> some kind of loop spanish jazz or something the whereas the other ones have been so glitchy and electronic and grimy everything gravy and biscuits yeah yeah humble is a mumble in the jungle you did can't never not the hustle get that shit how you live didn't he start like the first track with a similar line humble as a mumble in the jungle I don't know. Yo, I went from duck duck goose to getting fucked up off goose. Connect four to hit my connect four. Four grams or more just to make it through the day. That was cool. That was cool. Using those uh, child uh, games like duck duck goose or connect four and then connecting to his adulthood being like I'm mean, now i'm getting drunk off goose now i'm going to my connect four times for four grams and yeah shit. that was a pretty cool line i went from <laughs> duck duck goose to getting drunk off goose you should see the other guy he been made to speak of thumbs crap to try nullify he been try monetize handshakes and taps i'll be buying passports for my it's probably the most uh rhymey that I've heard Richie try to go for. While he was trying to do those really intricate internal rhymes, the beat all of a sudden had this change and it had this weird backwards vocals going on. A lot of vocals being used as instrumentation. Shit happens, gotta double down on the actions. Or they hold their breath and turn around for reactions. Say shit happen. We well accustomed to your tactics. I like that. We're gravy and biscuits. This album is really good so far. This album is really good. He's saying that we're cool like gravy and biscuits, but I mean, that shit's best served warm, and you know it. If I wanted some heat, I'd be like, yo, we're like gravy and biscuits. We're <laughs> fucking hot like gravy and biscuits right now. Maybe he <laughs> means like we go like gravy and biscuits. Oh, shit. Next track is Rap Song Tutorial. Step five, record. Okay, he's literally going through all the fucking steps. He's <laughs> <laughs> telling you guys how to write a song. I guess so. Man. And he'll be working for that tool on some dope boy shit. I'll be draped, draped up like Joaquin and her. Maybe throw some threes on so they don't think I defer. I'll be draped, drapped up like Joaquin and her. I don't even know what the hell that means because I've seen that movie. Joaquin looked fucking weird. The whole movie's fucking weird. <laughs> Pete 10 to 12 times to create a rap album. <laughs> New choice, got some bread in mind. Really enjoyed how they did the the steps in there. I thought that was like pretty cool. It's different. I've never seen or heard a song like that, and it actually was a good song. What they ended up creating, it was a catchy song. I'm for it, man. I really like that. The song was catchy. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be one of my favorites. I think it was conceptual. You know, there was a clear cut concept, and you know, it was interesting for the risk it took and in, in trying to deliver that the beat itself was actually really entertaining it had a swag to it up next wax on 
It's featuring Freddie Gibbs. Got my family on the right, and they all tell you same nigga, different zip code. Ain't shit change other than the fact I'm getting old. Same dude, different zip code. That was a good verse by Grogs. I mean, the dude always seems to come in with a little bit of introspection in his verses, personal touch to them. And I literally can envision him that struggle of being like, here's my music family and here's my real family. Here's this music life that I really, really want. Here's this family life that I worked really hard to build up. And that kind of dynamic of just trying to please everybody. Falling off, driving and this shit, they ain't double the cane. Yeah. Shit to be popping off, shit out of get rid with niggas a key for fame. Yeah. Ripping this water off, packing the back of the like I'm a Fuck, dude. <laughs> Fucking Freddy's ripping it, dude. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Bitch, I invented this shit. They can't fuck with the cane. All of it, dude. Ah. Oh. He's gonna go out in a blaze. He ain't gonna jail. I believe him. I believe every word he's saying. He's saying it with such conviction and he's saying it's such in a beautifully fluid flow. Like silky or something. Crazy. Crazy. And he's saying such harsh lines with this crazy flow, dude. I, I like that song. I like the wax on, wax off, and I actually really enjoyed the way the song was put together. There was an interlude uh, that Freddie Gibbs did, and he, in between his yeah, yeahs, he would put, he would say, my stovetop, yeah, and then grass pop, yeah, and then when the next guys came in, Richie with a T and then Freddie Gibbs together, they actually used the same references. I don't know, it sounded really cool to me, the way that they did that in the song. Grogs, Richie, Freddie, I mean, they killed it on the performance part. No, no complaints there. The, the flows are great. The lyrics were fantastic. The production though, I just got to highlight that once more. I'm probably going to say it for every track. I'm a believer in this producer, Parker Corey. The guy has a legitimate voice in hip hop. His beats are so eccentric. Even the way the song outro, there was like three different beats, like on the outro alone, just on the outro, like to put that much effort on an outro. Like, I respect that. And I respect like, all the work that went into this project so far. It feels r really well crafted. I can see why they took so long to put this out. Like I have been waiting for so long and you know, it was worth the wait. Next track is What A Year It's Been. Get out of my funk and now I feel alive. Writing verses with a smile while my daughter's by my side. Like, look, my mom made that. The mixings, very, very risky, crazy ass production. They're like glitching with their vocals, turning them up, down, uh, changing the pitch. It's crazy. Especially when Grogs said, got out of my funk and they switched the vocals. You can feel the rebirth happening as he's saying it, you know? Cause yeah, like the change in perspective matched the change in pitch. Yeah, the glitchiness got harsher and harsher as they kept going, and now it's just like completely changed. I'm for the ladder, spelling to chase so many facts. What's up? You missing me, too, so I'm missing me. Yagi, I father these niggas. This shit is a hobby. Earlier, he had a song, Wax On, Wax Off, and right here he's saying, is that Mr. Miyagi? Yeah, I was just gonna say that he called out Mr. Miyagi, so the wax on, wax off thing was about that. I mean, honestly, I was down and low, I mean, honestly, I was down the road. Richie with a T ended that sounding like fucking Kanye West. <laughs> Life of Pablo, that was straight out of there. It's funny, because he actually mentioned uh, Ye earlier in the verse. So, I mean, there's obvious influence. Right? Yeah. This track, you could just feel it. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, I agree with you. I also really enjoy those personal touches because it's an opportunity for us to relate to them. There's a lot of things going on in society that are fucked up and weird. I mean, it's just a weird ass fucking time. Oh, yeah. And so for them to kind of be, you know, just present of that and present themselves as just honest human beings is so refreshing. There's no front. There, it's just like, dude, this I get you, you know? And it's just nice to have a voice out there in music that you can just be like, I get you. you know, these guys are kind of satirical. Like they're not, they don't have jokey songs. They're not like throwing out punchlines per se, like yeah. clear cut, like jokey, like I'm trying to make you laugh. It's more like gonna make you smirk because it, it usually will enact like a certain thought in your head rather than a straightforward joke. It will get you thinking. Yeah. Up next, hello. Looks like it's a cover of an Adele song. Can anybody hear me now? That's pretty cool. I like the messaging. Is anybody listening? People choose to hear what they want. It's kind of true. I took it as just like an interlude. I don't really yeah. put too much thought into it. The beat was really cool though. I don't know who was singing. It didn't say, but they had an okay singing voice. Hey. 
Next track is Best Spot in the House. Song and they say they like now how you put that kind of power in these hands of mine and how a nigga post respond to some shit like that to me richie with a t sounds a little bit like tyler the creator just his voice a little bit shit was inexcusable uh, to talk about a death and not go to the funeral telling myself you gotta swallow all that guilt that you that you that's deep yeah i got real real personal real real personal he's talking about hey man I talk about your death in my songs and stuff like that, but yeah, I didn't go to your funeral. It's a pretty crazy dynamic to have to deal with, for sure. Yeah, funerals can be hard. The beat on this, though. The beat, the beat, the beat. Great production. Again. Okay. Wake the fuck up. Yo, luckily he did. My promise didn't last that long. You would text me, it would take like a week to respond. So that song almost made me cry. It was a really good song, but it was a very emotional song. Very personal very raw to such beautiful poetry like the lyrics were so poetic the way that Groggs was able to phrase all that in that verse and to make it rhyme the way it did and that's an accomplishment it did make me feel emotional as well my eyes got watery you don't realize what you have till it's gone a dude you know came back from his coma and stuff and all of a sudden it's just like normal shit right like you don't life's back to normal you're taking shit for granted all over again and that's kind of what this whole song's about just taking shit for granted mm -hmm. taking people for granted this was hard so it was a hard listen, but it was done really well, and yeah. the lyrics were really poetic. Up next, New Hawaii. And it's featuring Drum. Ooh, we, big baby Drum. Yeah, we are we like Drum. I'm in deep, but then I thought I'm mine. <laughs> All of a sudden, it got real West Coast gangsta, fucking funkadelic sample or something. Think about somebody who ain't thought about me one time. You say you love me too, a bitch. Act like it sometimes. <laughs> you got love drum yeah that was a bomb ass closing line <laughs> it just was so unexpected like these romantic melodies going on and shit like that and just to end it like whoa whoa you say you love me too well, fucking act like a bitch like oh ah. shit i put all my bread on us if i had to bid you got me in my head picasso and our kids that was so beautiful it was so poetic i really enjoyed drums part it was funny it was also poetic too but richie with the t came in it was so beautiful Definitely was a slower paced track. It was beautiful. The instrumentation was really beautiful. Their flows, you know, they didn't try to overcompensate by going really fast or anything like that. They kind of laid back into the groove right, with the slow pace. Use it as a tool to kind of deliver out these more like spoken word like rhymes. It was pretty poetic. Last track. Three man weave. Wanna be a hooper, but I wasn't that good. Had the dot I see doves with the panel of wood. Couldn't tell me that I wasn't on some king shit. But the beat is by far probably the most different of any of the other tracks. It's so jazzy and lively. Together talking about their high school days and how where they're at now, which is a common theme with throughout all these tracks, is this is where I was, this is how I was, and this is where I am. Yeah. It's no different here, and I really do get a sense of like history with them. I knew he played basketball and stuff like that, but then Grogs comes in, he's like, yo, I try to play, but I ain't that good. <laughs> and the pride that they have, he's talking about like three men weaving, like that camaraderie, you know, like it's us against the world. Yo, me, Grogs, and Pete, doing the three man we go, while I was too pretentious for some egos, then Fonte made a song with Little Beat up. I enjoyed that song as a closer, as them saying that they're a three man weave, you know, and that's where they are now. Um, it's not a favorite of mine, but I enjoyed the song. I actually really enjoyed it. It's gonna be on my list of favorites, to be honest. But it was very lively. It made me feel happy. It wasn't like a deep song or anything, especially not on some of the subject matters they touched earlier in this album. Yeah. Celebration song, almost. And, yeah. I, and, and you know what? I was for it. I was for it. As someone who's listened to these guys for a few years now, it's cool that they're they are where they are. They got the record deal. Like I said earlier, I'm down with that camaraderie, man. Us against the world. I dig it. Good track. This is final thoughts where we give our favorite tracks and we give the album a rating. What are your favorite tracks? So my favorite tracks are Peruna, Corona, and Lime. Jawbreaker, Get the Fuck Up, Jailbreak the Tesla, Gravy and Biscuits, Rap Song Tutorial, Wax On, What a Year It's Been, Best Spot in the House, and New Hawaii. My favorite tracks were Karuna and Lime, Jawbreaker, Get the Fuck Up, Joe Break the Tesla, Wax On, What a Year It's Been, Best Spot in the House, and Three Men Weave. So if you had to give this album a rating, what are you going to give it? So this has got to be one of my favorite albums of the year so far that I've heard. I'm going to give it a 9.3. 
I want to give this album an 8.8 .8 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorites of the year so far as well. I might even like it more by the end of the year, but it was by far one of the most diverse sounding albums. It had a lot of different techniques applied to it, um, both on the production side, the flows, the features they had were actually excellent. It was a great listen. I enjoyed the roller coaster. It seriously, I mean, if an album can make you emotional, happy, make you think, oh, make you think, make you think actually, I mean, that shit is like, this shit is gold to me right now. Like, it's so good. It was so well produced and so well put together. And I waited so fucking long to hear this. And I'm just, I'm not even upset that I waited at this point. And I was kind of upset for a minute. But I'm just so happy that it's out. And it was just so good. Just so good. That's going to be it. So if you like these music reaction videos, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Heard It Now. Let us know what you thought of this Injury Reserve album and please let us know what we should react to next down in the comment section. That's going to be it, everybody. Bye.